And let's bring in ABC News medical contributor, Dr. John Brownstein, for more on this. Dr. Brownstein, good morning. Why do you think we're seeing greater numbers of this inflammatory syndrome recently? And it sounds like we're also seeing more severe cases. Yeah, thanks, Diane. You know, it's because of the numbers, the sheer numbers of cases that we're seeing in the pediatric population. Three million U.S. children have now tested positive for coronavirus. That's 13 percent of the cases. When we were at the beginning of this pandemic, it was about 2 percent. So there's a real shift. Even in the last week alone, we saw 100,000 pediatric COVID cases. So we have this increase in cases. It's probably related to the surge post-holiday. And you have this lag of a few weeks till you see this syndrome take place. And in fact, LA County saw this big bump, as we heard, 35% increase. And so while most children are asymptomatic or have very minor symptoms, we do see these more severe cases. And you have more cases overall, you'll have more cases, severe cases. And what's concerning is you're, we're seeing more children severely in the ICU. So it went from about 50 to 80%. So a lot of concerns, we don't really know what is driving that increase in severity. We know it's probably not likely the variant specifically, but what we've seen in the UK and Israel is that we've seen increases in pediatric cases because of those variants. And when you have this much virus circulating, again, you're going to have cases of this, this multi-inflammatory syndrome. And it's interesting that it comes weeks after the COVID symptoms, because parents, no doubt, are breathing a sigh of relief, thinking their kids beat the virus, and then they have to deal with this dangerous syndrome. So we heard Stephanie say to look out for fever and rash. What else should parents be on alert for, and does it help to catch this early? Yeah, it's, it's such a kick to the gut a little bit, right, because we're now on the downswing of this pandemic. And now we're hearing about this sort of post-inflammatory complication that happens three to four weeks after. Remember, we've only seen about 2,000 cases and only 30 kids have unfortunately died. It's still a rare condition, but we know it's, it causes this inflammation in the heart and lungs, kidneys. It's all very uh, concerning. Now, we don't really know what causes it. It could be a genetic link. It could be a link to obesity. But generally, we just need to be look out for, on the lookout for these symptoms, fevers, red eyes, vomiting, fatigue, headache. Problem is, these are very sort of nondescript symptoms. And so parents just need to be look out for really a change in the severity of symptoms. And if you're concerned, you really should just, just talk to your pediatrician. You know, better to be safe in these situations. Are there any disparities noticed so far in the groups of children that are more likely to suffer from this syndrome or more likely to have severe cases? Yeah, unfortunately, this is another issue with this pandemic that is exacerbating disparities that exist in the community. And this is really the likely reason behind this is you just have more cases in minority populations and you'll have more severe cases. About two thirds of the cases among kids are in Latino and black communities. And so we have to be considering what these disparities are. A significant amount of work needs to be done to understand the impact of race, ethnicity, underlying socioeconomic status, and these trends, there's ongoing work. I know at my hospital, Boston Children's, that is focused on this, but still there's just so much unknown. The good thing is that we know that treatments work, right? IV fluids, antibiotics, steroids, and most all children recover fine after this. And Dr. Brownstein, any idea when kids could be authorized to get the vaccine? Right, so of course we're hearing about these severe cases, and of course we wanna think about how do we get these vaccines to our children? Not only that, they do play a role in community transmission. And so to get to anywhere of this herd immunity that we keep talking about, we have 25% of this population in the pediatric population, they need to get access to vaccines. As we know, vaccines start in the, in the adult population where the safety trials are done. Now we're finally doing this de-escalation. We're moving into the 12 to 16 year olds, eventually the nine to 12 year olds and keep going down. The idea is that we'll probably have spring summer uh, for those sort of 12 to 16 year olds. And hopefully by the fall, grade one and above, we'll start getting that vaccine. And so, you know, that's what we're optimistically looking for and, and fingers crossed we'll get there. Fingers crossed indeed. Dr. John Brownstein, always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.